Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking deep diving crankbaits. I'm out here on beautiful Lake Fork in Texas. I'm not sure there is a better place on the planet to be talking deep cranks. So today we're going to be talking about the different styles, what they're for, when you should be throwing them as we're going post spawn into summer. As most of you know, we are traveling around the country right now. Doing something like that requires an incredible amount of packing and preparation, and it's incredibly difficult to select gear. So today, since we're talking about deep crankbaits, I pulled out the three boxes of deep cranks that I brought with me to take all over the country because I think looking through those three boxes will give you a clearer picture than anything I could say or do because this is the gear that I felt would get me on fish, get me the right bites, get me key big bites going from state to state to state during the post spawn. That's what we wanna know about. Why not look at the actual gear that I had enough confidence in to drag cross country? So. Right out the gate, we're gonna start with these two boxes. I brought three boxes of baits total in the deep crank category. Included in that is an entire box of 6XDs and an entire box of 10XDs. That should tell you something. The third box is a variety of baits. Now, why did I do that? The 6XD and 10XD are incredibly consistent baits. They fish extremely well. There's an excellent color selection. There are key colors that I have a whole world of confidence in. So it was important to me to bring a lot of those baits. Before we go any farther into the baits, let's back up and talk about this whole deep cranking thing. Why are we doing it? Well, as you guys know, if you've been following the chain of videos we've been doing, because since the beginning of the year, we've been following the actual transitions of the fish. So now we're talking about leaving the spawn, going into the post spawn. We know that the fish are backing out of spawning areas. They're feeding back up, they're recovering from the spawn and they're splitting. Some of those fish are going back up into the shallows, into the grass, into the cover. The other half, they're going out to deep edges, rock outcrops, ledges, humps, etc. And those fish are going to be schooling up thick. And that is where the deep crank comes in. So the time to throw a deep crank is when you're searching for those schools of offshore or deep water ledge or break or, or point fish, those big schools of fish. We recently did a video on Lake Fork throwing square bills. The fish were moved up chasing gizzard shad. Well, later in the day, those fish back out and drop off. They get out deeper, that's where the deep crank comes into play. So, you understand the gist of it. Now let's talk about the details. When should you do it, where should you do it, and then we'll go back into specifics of baits and colors. So these fish are gonna be pulling to the outer edges. So you wanna fish either the last secondary point going into an arm, or you wanna fish the actual main lake points, the main lake humps, the high spots out in the open water, or the saddles in between the two. If you've got a big main lake point that divides two arms and then the water gets deeper and then comes up onto a hump, they could be on the hump, in the saddle, or on the point itself. It just comes down to that particular spot on your lake. You need to check all three. Electronics are a very important part of this process. A good mapping card that will give you detailed information, show you where the ledges and breaks are, will cut your learning curve down a lot. But if you don't have that, the bait itself is an amazing depth finder. You can tell soft bottom from hard bottom. You can tell how deep it is. You can tell how quickly you're getting down there. You know the rough maximum depth of a bait. So if you're not hitting bottom, you know roughly how deep it is. If you're banging and it's just sort of digging, soft bottom. If it's ticking and banging and popping, you've got hard bottom or rock. So you really can do it without electronics at all. Now deep cranking is very difficult to do from shore because the bait wants to dig and bite and you're trying to force it to come uphill, you're gonna get snagged a lot. 
but it can be done if you're patient. Crank hard, it'll hit bottom and then let it float up. And then crank hard, let it hit bottom, let it float up. You can fish it uphill from the shore, but this is something that is done much more easily from the boat. Now, back to the baits themselves. I told you right out the gate, an entire box of 10XDs. But my color selection is simple. The bolder white colors, like a sexy shad, or the true bold parrot type colors, a chartreuse blue, those sorts of colors, chartreuse black, those really bright, bold colors are where my priority lies in the summertime. Now, if you are in a crystal clear water fishery, you may want to go to some more natural see-through ghost type colors if it's crystal clear but if it's anything short of crystal you know if you've got six feet of visibility or less those bright bold colors work extremely well this time of year the water is warm especially as this continues because understand the advice i'm giving you it'll work today most places you may be up north where it's ahead of schedule but remember this information for when you get to the post spawn for everybody else, you've already got some post-spawn fish at least. You may still have spawners, but you have some fish that have already headed back out. So those fish, they're sitting in clear water. They've already recuperated from the spawn. They're focused on two things, that good water quality. That's why they're out there in deep water. They've got better oxygen there right now. So those fish are out there looking for good water quality where it's easier for them to live. And they're looking to eat and eat and eat and eat because their metabolism is high in that warmer water. So bold colors help those fish find the bait and they're already amped up, they're already feeding aggressively, they're very likely to strike at a bold color. Now, if my fish seem to not want the bait quite as much on a given day, I focus on the white type colors, the shad type colors. If they're aggressive and I'm getting a lot of bites, I go to the chartreuses because the chartreuses, when the fish are revved up and raging, I get bigger bites on chartreuse. I can't even tell you why. I just know that it's been a very consistent thing for me. And then, of course, I store all these in double deep Plano boxes, if you didn't notice. The easiest thing to do, I rip out all the center dividers and just pile them on in, in the deep box, not the standard box. You can get a lot of baits in that way. So the second box, I told you, 6XDs. Again, I keep it really simple. Look how much chartreuse and blue is in there or sexy shad is in there. Just a few, just a handful of ghost type colors. Not very many because my priority again is to those bolder colors. Now, I also have some craw in here. Out west, we get on a really good craw colored bite. It's worth trying. We know that that's a springtime thing. It works extremely well, but it can work well in deep water too in the summertime, especially towards the end of summer as you head towards fall. They start eating those reds really good again, but I still carry them along just in case. So that box, all six XDs. And then of course I replace all my hardware. You guys know that I do that every bait. I change my split rings out to owner hyper wires. In the case of a 6XD, I change them out to a number three or number four. In the case of a 10XD, I change them out to a number five split ring. Then my hooks, that's a Gamakatsu EWG size two. That's the perfect hook for that 6XD or anything similarly sized, a DD22, a six cents, etc. That size two is gonna be great. And for the 10XD, I go with a one knot, but I tend not to go with the EWG. I typically throw an owner ST36, which is a 1X hook. This can get complicated, so I'm gonna leave all that down in the video description for you, make it really simple. On to the next batch of baits, because despite having two boxes of dedicated baits, here I am on Lake Fork, I wanted to see if I could get on a deep crank bite 
And the 6XD and 10XD were not the two baits that I tied on, primarily because on this fishery they are thrown so much, I wanted to throw something a little different. So I was throwing a Sixth Sense in a color I have a ton of confidence in. And I was throwing that big Azuma 25. I also throw that Azuma 22 a lot. But concept is the same. So this last box, this is just key confidence baits that I know work extremely well. So up here on the top, we've got more of the Azumas. We've got them in the 22 and the 25. That's all I brought on this trip. If I'm throwing that bait, I want to dig deep, extra deep. See how the head of this bait is flattened out compared to the rest of the bait? The head itself is part of that diving surface, part of the lip essentially. So that bait gets down at an extreme dive angle. It gets really deep, really fast, really aggressively. So if I'm trying to probe extra deep, that is one of the key baits that I turn to. A 10XD or that Azuma are my favorites for getting ultra, ultra deep. I started playing with the Azuma this winter, had some great success with it. I've been extremely happy with that bait. Again, in the 22 and the 25. I haven't even messed around with the smaller sizes because I already have other baits that I have so much confidence in, like a 6XD or a DD22 or a Hot Lips in those smaller sizes. Then in the Cloud 9 series from Six Sense, I brought just a handful of those. I've got that one tied on there. I fell in love with that bait when we were down in Mexico. We did a ton of damage on that bait, caught some really, really nice fish. I've got a lot of confidence in it now. It's been working great since I got home. So again, bold colors, chartreuse blue, or that bolder chartreuse blue parrot. Again, traditionally parrot type colors, or that white, white and chartreuse, little lavender, high profile, bright, bold colors. Then the DD22s, again, that bold, bright color. Berkeley, I brought a couple of the Berkeley dredgers because you guys know that we built a lot of confidence with that last year. Again, bold colors. How many times in a row am I gonna say that? But this guy, the dredger, dives extremely deep despite not being a giant bait. I mean, you're talking about a bait that's gonna get in the 20s in a relatively small size. Hopefully that sun's not completely blasting you guys right now. Last but not least, is going to be Hot Lips. Lure Jensen Hot Lips is a bait that I've just had a lot of confidence in over the years in all of the sizes. So I can't go drive across the country without it. So again, keeping it simple, breaking it down. And I will link you all those baits that I brought on this trip, but keeping it simple, we wanna go deep, extra deep. I wanna get as deep as possible for a given size of bait. So the monster baits, I'm trying to get super deep. In the mid-range baits, I want the baits that go the deepest for their size, because everything about a crankbait is getting down. Once you're down, you can get that bait to dig and bounce and pop, and you can get reaction strikes. And by reaction strike, I mean, I'm working that bait and I'm banging into cover. I don't always just continue cranking. I'll be cranking, 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 pause. Crank, 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 pause. Crank, crank, I hit a rock. I let it sit there. Crank, let it sit. Crank, crank, crank. Start going again. Hit another rock, pause. It's very aggressive, very reactive. I want those fish to lash out. And then again, the benefit of this style is that you're looking for schooling bass. So if I catch one, I don't stop there. I crank and crank and crank and crank that spot, trying to get number two and three and five and 20 and 30. However big that school is, I wanna get as many of them as possible before I switch and try another bait. The crankbait is a phenomenal way to get fish after fish after fish. Then as far as rods, let me try and turn this camera a little for you. Hopefully that takes at least some of the glare off. The two rods that I brought on this trip, 
going all over the place is going to be an 805 CB. That's a Dobbins rod. That 805 CB is a bait, a rod that I've got confidence in to throw a 10 XD down to a 6 XD extremely well. There's also an 806. I prefer the 805 even for the 10 XD. I just like the way it loads up. The other one, this is a Zodius. This is a Shimano 7 foot 6 and it's a glass rod. I throw everything from a square bill, a larger square bill. Any square bill that has a size 2 hook, I can throw on this rod all the way up to a 10XD or that monster Azuma. I have no problem. Now the glass rod will load deeper into the blank on the cast. It's a little spongier when you cast it than a graphite rod. So you have to get used to that. But when you load up on a fish with that big glass rod, it loads so deep into the blank, that rod folds up, those fish are pinned. You guys saw us catching big, big square bill fish. I was using this rod and those fish were staying pinned. It holds them extremely well. Crankbaits are one of those categories where you want the right rod for the job. And if you're gonna seriously get into deep cranking, a dedicated rod is a very good idea. You can do it on other rods, you can mix it up, but if you're going to be doing a lot of it, you want the right rod. And then I'm using, even with the monster baits, I use a seven to one gear ratio. Traditionally, we used five to ones. I use a seven to one. Most people don't do that. To me, the value of a seven to one is that if I really want to power down deep, get that bait to dive hard, I can do it. I can crank hard. I can get it down super fast. I can dig bottom really aggressively. But if I don't want to do that, I just slow down my retrieve. If you have a slower reel, you don't have the ability to speed up and get a bait to dive that quickly. The downside is that the higher the gear ratio, the more difficult it is to turn that handle. It's hard work. It's like when you were a kid riding a bike, shifting gears. It's hard work in the wrong gear. So a seven to one is gonna be harder to crank the handle, but if you wanna get more aggressive, change the way that you crank and get harder reaction bites, I recommend you at least try fishing with a seven to one. And I'll link my exact setup down in the video description. I sometimes crank braid to leader, especially if I wanna do a lot of stop and goes because it's really aggressive, it's really reactive. When I stop, the bait stops. I also crank straight fluoro. With these big baits, I'm either cranking 15 or 17 pound fluoro. And if I'm going the other route, if I'm going braid to leader, I'm using either a 20 or 30 pound leader, going to a 15 pound mono, or a 16 pound stretchy fluoro for shock absorption. And again, we'll link all that. But guys, keep it simple. Even though I just went through three boxes, the reality is I've got two rods, seven to one reel on a big crankbait rod. I'm throwing ultra deep baits and mid range baits and I'm doing it in essentially two colors. Something that's mostly white, something that's mostly chartreuse. And then I change my hooks and split rings so that when I do get a monster bite, because that's the ultimate goal of any of this is to catch a monster. That's why you're down there probing those big schools of fish. You're trying to find the big one in the mix and get that reaction. When I do get that bite, if I've upgraded my hardware, if I've got the right rod, I'm getting that fish in the boat. Guys, I hope this video helps you. We're headed into summer. You've got months to get out there and deep crank. It's just beginning. Have a blast. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon.